Hey guys, I'm AJ Gowan and I'm the lead instructor here at Aviator Paramotor. I'm creating this video because I want to help students leave training or maybe even people that uh, can benefit from any of this information to become better and safer pilots. further my paramotoring skills after I leave training. And so that's what this video and further videos moving forward we're gonna be based on. Um, this is gonna be a series of multiple different types of videos. Uh, this one's gonna be based on roll oscillation, so controlling your wing movement back and forth. We'll get one into uh, energy management, also as pitch oscillations, um, throttle management. This will all lead into other skills such as foot dragging, um, S turns or coordinated turns, which is basically an intro into wing overs. Entry into a little bit more. There you go. Now slow exit. Now we're going to start ramping these things down. Slow right, a little bit more right, a little bit more. Now hold, just hold. We're going to turn into figure eight. Slow exit. Now back to the left. Exactly. Perfect. Now you're ramping them down a little bit, just right. But before we can get into any more of these advanced things, we need to really understand the fundamentals of energy management, roll oscillation, power management, um, because all that stuff is gonna be building blocks on how we can get into uh, foot dragging. Um, that being said, there's a lot of nuances that go in with all these particular things. And so it's super important to have these fundamentals dialed in before we move forward. All this information is not meant to be uh, in replacement for in actual instruction. It's meant to be uh, as supplemental or a better understanding of some of the things that maybe you've already tried or you've gotten yourself into and don't understand why, that's kind of what this is for. It's already for people that are, have been flying for a little bit and just want a better understanding. Um, I know some of you guys are probably going to go out and try a lot of these things, but just please make sure that we start with the fundamentals, really get them dialed in, and, and then before we progress to the next thing. You need to kind of make a deal with yourself that you're not going to push too fast, too far. But the idea here is that you want as much room for error as possible. I would recommend flying with at least one reserve at all times, regardless of practicing these skills. I think reserves are incredibly important and they are proven to work. So let's start always with learning any of these maneuvers with lots of altitude. At least three or 4,000 feet above ground level is going to give you a lot of room for air. Um, let's set a hard deck of 1,000 feet. Let's not practice any of this stuff below 1,000 feet until we really have it dialed in and it's become natural. All these things that you're going to be learning over the series of these videos are going to be based on getting to a point where it's natural responses. Uh, if it's all become natural to you at that point, then you can start to practice that stuff as you get lower. But um, some of these items that you're going to learn can build exponentially and become more dangerous if you don't really know what you're doing. So let's get into what causes roll oscillations. There's multiple things that can cause this, one of them being uh, too heavily loaded on your wing and under power. Uh, the power of the motor being P factor and torque can cause a roll oscillation. Sometimes they're very small and just rock back and forth. Um, sometimes they build exponentially to the point where you actually have to reduce power and active pilot it to get it under control. Um, that would be an extreme case. The other ways could be that you entered or exited a turn too quickly and then as well as erratic hand movements where you're actually feeding into an oscillation because you're moving around side to side and a lot of roll oscillations and pitch oscillations and, and paramotor piloting in general is going to be actually counterintuitive. That's why it's super important to get uh, professional instruction when learning how to fly. The automatic response for stopping a roll oscillation should be to reduce power and go hands up, therefore reducing pressure on the wing. Oftentimes this is going to solve the oscillation within one, two, maybe even three swings and everything will be uh, okay at that point. Therefore, you would increase power and steer accordingly. Um, 
but sometimes that's not exactly what we need, especially if we're in turbulent conditions. You need to understand active piloting and getting out of the oscillation or even preventing the oscillation before it starts. That's what some of this video is gonna help cover. I also like to say that um, helping reduce oscillations, if this is something you're having an issue with consistently on your wing, is going to be trim all the way in. If you are trimmed out on your wing, oftentimes this will actually help induce these oscillations, such as uh, a very heavily loaded trike with a small wing, just adding power can build an oscillation to the point where you're actually doing wing overs. So it's very important to reduce power uh, and go hands up. That will help stop the oscillation, but trimming in will also help with minimizing how big the oscillation gets. So we've talked about the main reflex uh, to stop a roll oscillation should be to reduce power and go hands up. That will stop any acting forces on the wing that would cause it to oscillate. Uh, now, it may take two or three rotations to stop that oscillation, but there are other ways. One of these ways being to enter a slow turn. Uh, entering a slow turn is a way to stop an oscillation. It's basically getting your hands staying still, and you're going to go into a small turn, therefore slowly dampening that oscillation. You're eventually at some point going to swing back into the turn, so it's kind of like even a blind squirrel finds a nut when you fall back into that oscillation and dampen it. I don't like the method of going into a slow turn to stop an oscillation because what I've seen with students is uh, instinctually they want to pulse the brake and that, therefore it just continues to do the exact same thing. They inevitably always pull the brake at the exact wrong time, therefore building up this oscillation exponentially. So what I like to do actually is to learn how to active pilot the wing uh, and I'm going to get into that with learning to watch your wing as it starts to swing. That being said, this is where that altitude is going to come into play because instead of looking ahead, you're going to be watching that wing, trying to learn and understand the timing of what's happening there. So this is why it's very important to make sure that we have lots of altitude. So let's talk about how to active pilot a wing and how to find the right time to stop an oscillation, when to pull the brake, basically. Um, if you're on an oscillation, you can practice this with a little bit of power, but I recommend going to lots of altitude and reducing power to idle and getting yourself into an oscillation. To start the oscillation to begin with, you're going to have to pull brake down to your shoulder and then for probably about two seconds and then release quickly. If you do that correctly, you're gonna kinda of get into a small roll oscillation, maybe with your wingtip probably going to the horizon and then back. Uh, if you don't do anything relatively quickly, what you'll find is, is that it actually settles itself out on its own if you're on an A or B rated wing, even most C rated wings. But let's say we're trying to get that oscillation going and what we do is we pull a considerable amount of brake. And again, as you're first learning these, let's keep it small and simple, just again to get an idea. But as you get better and better and start to understand this, let's make them a little bit bigger. So we'll pull that brake down to our shoulder, hold it for two seconds. We'll get that wing kind of falling over and going into a turn this way to where we bank out. And before we actually induce the turn and the wing has already gone into its bank, we'll just reduce that pressure quickly. And all of a sudden we'll fall right back through that turn that we were about to start. So as we start to swing, we're underneath the wing, back and forth. I want you to pick one wing tip, preferably your right, since most people have their left their throttle in their left hand. We'll leave our right hand free to stop this oscillation. Now, at some point, you'll understand this, and you'll be able to use both hands simultaneously to understand how to stop the oscillation quickly. But for now, let's just start with our right hand. We look up, and I'm talking about my right here. It would be your left if you're watching this video. And what we're going to be talking about is this right wing tip comes over to the horizon on this side and I'm looking at this wingtip. I'm watching it the whole time. It goes up and then it comes down. It goes up and then it comes down. So I'm gonna wait to time this oscillation, uh, how to stop this oscillation, until this right wingtip gets all the way to the lowest possible point, right where it's about to apex, and I'm gonna swing right back through again. So once that wingtip hits the low right side and I begin that apex, I'm going to start that pull that right break. And that's gonna dampen that oscillation most of the time, just this one pull will stop any kind of oscillations. Um, that being said, it is proportionate. The smaller the oscillation, the less brake you need to pull to dampen that. The bigger the oscillation, you may have to pull a lot of brake to stop this. This is where it gets tricky and why we want lots of altitude as well. We're, all, we're watching the wing and not paying attention to the ground as much as we should. Uh, so we want the altitude for that. But also, if you pull the wrong brake at the wrong time, what ends up happening is you actually build this oscillation exponentially. It's essentially how you start to get into a wingover. Wingovers are actually pretty easy to do. The problem with wingovers is that they build very quickly and it's the exit is where things start to go bad. So we need to make sure that we really understand these roll oscillations before we ever even try and do coordinated turns or um, you know, S turns basically.
with all that being said, let's go in here and dissect some videos of us actually stopping an oscillation and you actually watching this happen in real time. Okay, now I'm swinging to the right. My right side is low, I'm pulling to the right and I'm stopping the brake. Basically what's happening here is I'm pulling on the side that I'm swinging towards. It doesn't matter if the wing's on the low side or the high side. If my body is penduling under the wing to the right, I'm pulling to the right. If my body's moving to the left while the wing is rotating, then I'm gonna pull to the left, right? Just like this. So I'm swinging right, now I'm swinging left. I'm gonna pull right right now because I'm swinging to the right. As soon as I stop swinging, I'm gonna go hands up. All right, so big oscillation here. Now back to the left, big oscillation. Okay, I'm gonna wait, figure this out. Right break right now, right break and hold, hands back up, and that stops the oscillation. I got a little bit of a surge there and a little bit of a pitch oscillation, but that's, uh, that's okay, you know. Um, I did stop the side to side oscillation, so let's do it one more time. Big left break and hold. Oh boy, that's a big one. Now I'm swinging big time. Now I'm gonna swing back to the right, right break and hold, hands up. As the wing goes over to its lowest apex on one wing tip, what's going to end up happening is you are penduluming out to this side. This wing is swinging down, but what's going to eventually happen is you are going to pendulum back underneath this wing. So the instinct is to pull the high side brake. That's most people's intuitive response. I would say 95% of people, when they think that they got to stop an oscillation, they pull the wrong one, which would be the left, or in your case, if you're looking at this video, it would be the right side. Uh, so they would pull this high side brake, therefore causing it to swing back over erratically. But the problem with this is, and that's what you actually do when you're kiting, is when you're kiting, you're standing in one place and you want the wing to come back over, so you actually end up pulling the high side, therefore causing this angle of attack of the wing on the left side to come back over. However, we're already swinging underneath the wing this direction, so there's no need to bring the wing back over. In fact, what we need to do is dampen that swing, so we end up pulling this low side brake. As we swing under, we end up dampening and stopping that oscillation, typically within one, full or in one uh, swing. Um, again, it's proportionate, so if this wing is halfway below the horizon, if I'm looking at this logo and it's halfway below the horizon because I just came out of a wing over, I'm going to have to pull a substantial amount of brake to stop this oscillation within one go. It's better to wait several rolls than it is to mistime it and pull the wrong break. Like I said, that will build up this oscillation uh, exponentially. So if it takes two or three rotations to figure this out, so be it. Most of the time, if you're on an A or B rated wing, uh, you, it's gonna settle itself out if you just go hands up and reduce power. So what we've done now is we've got this oscillation going, it's fairly large and I want to stop it. So from my perspective, I'm going to time it on the low side. So as this wing comes back over to my right side, I'm going to wait till its lowest point, now it's apex, I'm going to pull that right brake down more and more as it comes up. If I did it correctly and was proportionate with the brake pull in relation to the swing or the oscillation, then it should stop as soon as it hits the 12 o'clock position. I will immediately release the brake and I will continue on with straight and level flight. Here, so wing, the wingtip touched the horizon. Wingtip touched the horizon. Now I'm gonna wait, wingtip touches the horizon. Okay, I wanna stop this oscillation now. I'm gonna wait and pull right brake right now. Right brake and hold, hands back up. As soon as I stop swinging, I, pull, I uh, let those brakes up. So let's do another wingy dingy. Wingtip a little bit below, actually that was more of the logo. Logo below the horizon. Logo below the horizon, hands back up. I'm gonna wait and pull left brake right now and stop. And hands back up, perfect. Once the wing comes down to the lowest point, sometimes you don't end up pulling enough brake and you're underneath this wing and you start to swing up this or down this way and the wing comes over, you are now swinging back up. That doesn't mean you need to start pulling this brake because the wing is already going this way. You still need to continue to hold this this side of the brake, the right, that we, the one that we started with, as it continues to go into the high side. As soon as that apex of that turn or that swing stops, that's when you'll release because now the apex has just started to go back the other direction. So technically speaking, you should start pulling left brake as soon as you've hit that lowest point. And now this oscillation will stop the second time. Um, that's the case whenever you don't pull enough brake to stop an oscillation. You actually continue on into another swing. Uh, again, I'd rather wait 
uh, until the apex is gone, go hands back up, and then we'll reevaluate as you swing back through to see how much you need to pull on the next time it comes back to the, the low side on the right. If any of this stuff sounds like information that you're interested in, continue to watch. Great thumbs up, like, subscribe, etc., uh, And give me feedback on what you want to see in the future. I have a series of videos that I already have planned, uh, some of which have already been filmed. I just want to release them sequentially. Um, and like I said, roll oscillation, pitch oscillation, energy management, spot landing, foot dragging, coordinated turns, why it's important to stay current as a paramotor pilot, um, Etc. There's going to be a lot of those. If there's anything that I just did not list that you think needs to be covered, please let me know and I will try to make a video about that.